Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> What's up? I'm rocking my old UPS gear. So what, what I want to talk about today is how do you quit your full-time, part-time job and go straight into your passion? Or maybe it's just your way out like it was for me. I just need to find something to get out of this job because I'll go over all that in a minute, but maybe you're running into the same thing. How do you get out of your current job to go full-time into entrepreneurship? All right, so number one, yes, I worked at UPS for 12 years, and it was great when I first started. There were a few other challenges that happened, uh, but it taught me a lot. It taught me hard work like crazy, um, and it also taught me that you know, if people started working around the same time you started working, they were going to get paid just as much as you were going to get paid no matter uh, how much work you've done. Um, I did have a path to a few more uh, like leadership roles within uh, the organization, but I decided to say no because um, at the time I was raising my daughter and I started to notice that, you know, Christmas time, you're just not going to be home much. So I said, well, you know what? I got to get out of here. Um, because I want to be there for her uh, growing as she grows up for Christmas time. And so I started putting a play uh, into action, which was quit and go into something that's going to pay just as much as a UPS driver. So what I did was uh, I calculated that. I said, well, how am I going to do that? And what am I going to do? Ended up being real estate. A couple of buddies said, you know, jump into real estate. And I was like, okay, okay. You know, people always say, chase your passion, chase your passion, chase your passion. Real estate wasn't my passion, but thank God I fell into it. But it was never my passion. I like to draw, right? Like I liked to, you know, hang out with my friends, you know, that type of deal. Like, you know, there, there were, I did have some entrepreneurial stuff I like to do. But if you look at my path, man, I, I've swept driveways. I've tried to uh, patent a few things, tried to do a clothing company, sponsored uh, fighters, MMA fighters. Uh, back in the day, back in the day, I mean, uh, I would draw for people, draw for businesses, like always had that hustle, but you know, I just didn't have the passion to get into it, but it was a way out. So I said, okay, so step one, decide. Decide that you're going to leave the company. You have to make that decision within your mind to, in order for it to help you move forward and, and actually leaving that, that company. Number two, how much money do you need in order to survive, right? Like how much money do you need to be bringing in in order for your family to survive, for you to survive, to keep buying gas and uh, paying bills and, and the whole deal. And that's what I did. I calculated that. I wasn't living on a lot at that time. So it was more than much I needed. Um, but in my mind, I wanted to make as much as a UPS driver. And at the time, it was about a thousand bucks a week. And in my in North Carolina, Fayetteville, North Carolina, that's like you're balling out of control. In my mind, the way I grew up I was like, if I could do that, I, next steps president. I don't know, like that is huge to me. And so that that became my goal. So you got to decide what that goal is for you and how much how much you're going to need to make from your entrepreneurial path that you could end up quitting the job. Now, I will say, this goes to my number three. At the time, I did hire a real estate coach, um, Anna Kruger. And uh, she asked me, she said, hey, listen, what would it take for you to quit UPS sooner than later? And I was like, man, I guess I would need reserves in a bank account to show that I could live for a little bit, you know, if I don't have a closing. And she was like, awesome. How fast do you think you can get a closing? I was like, I guess as fast as I want to get a closing. She was like, awesome. How much money do you need in reserves in order for you to make that jump? I said, I don't remember what it was, but it was six months. I think she told me three months at the time. And I was like, oh, I'll do six. Um, just because it was, if it were me, oh my gosh, I would have jumped way sooner. But I was raising a kid and I had to look out for that. And I had to think about that because at UPS, you had fantastic health care. You had the whole works, right? 401k, you were getting uh, uh, stock options, um, there a lot of great things, you know, in terms of family stuff. So I had to be very careful with that. Did six months. Once that number hit six months, it's kind of crazy what happened. See that picture right there? So I ordered this on probably eBay at the time. I don't even know. It's probably Amazon uh, because... 
I wanted to hang it up in my bedroom, which is a whole nother story of how much stuff I had in my bedroom of just affirmations and numbers and my bedroom, the whole house was outlined with on my clocks. I used to write time to get to work. Like it was hustle time. But uh, in there, it says, if you don't like your job, quit. And the day that my reserve in that account hit the six month mark that I, if I didn't sell anything, I could pay my bills for six months. This came in the mail. Now, tell me that wasn't the universe saying, hey, listen, you've committed, you have built the plan, you've hit goal. What are you going to do? And it was it was a cool day because I knew I was going to quit. I knew I was going to quit. And uh, once that day happens and for you, maybe you need to sit down and say, hey, how much reserves do I need in order for me to keep the family afloat if if it doesn't work out for a year? If it doesn't work out for six months, three months, nine months, you know, you got to look at that. And then say you saved enough from your current job into that account. Moving to my number four, will you jump? Will you jump? That's life testing you. Do you want to jump or not? Hey, listen, this is something you said you wanted to do. You build out a plan. You hit goal. Okay, so you said you were going to do it. Are you really going to do it? Do you really want your dreams that bad? The universe is going to do whatever it can to put obstacles in front of you. Only through stepping over those obstacles and through them and under them, you know, and all of that, we we finally understand that every obstacle is an opportunity. And every obstacle that comes your way, you know that you're about to be excelled forward. But it's the universe saying like, hey, listen, you said you want it. Really? How bad do you really want it? And as soon as you step into that opportunity, woo, big things going to happen more obstacles <laughs> of course there's gonna be more obstacles but what's life without obstacles right so um yeah you got to make the commitment and jump you thought this was gonna be a long video <laughs> nah it's make the commitment in your head that that's what something you want to do and then obviously look at how many or how much money you're going to need to survive for x amount of time say you don't have the income coming in or the revenue coming in from the business that you said you want to do how long can you live Number three, stack that cash. Stack the cash. Put it into an account. Because here's what's cool. There's a quote that says, pressure makes diamonds. Do you think when I put in my two-week notice at UPS that I was freaking out a little bit? I was there for 12 years. I was a single father on welfare. <laughs> Do I need to keep going? I was freaking out. But I did know the universe was testing me because I was listening to the books Think and Grow Rich, uh, Napoleon Hill. Um, uh, oh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Napoleon Hill. Oh, man, there's a ton of other. I was filling my mind up with positive stuff. So I was scared, but I did know because I was scared, I was going to work. And work I did. I didn't get any sleep. <laughs> Matter of fact, at my firm at the time, they used to buy me toothpicks and as a joke to, put, to ho hold open my eyelids. I got so many people telling me I was going to burn out, but they didn't understand my Northern Star. They didn't understand why I was doing it. The pressure will push you to stay up late, to get stuff done, to make sure your dream happens. Some of us are so comfortable with our job. We, we, we talk about what we're going to do when we get ready to get ready, to get ready, to get ready, to get ready. When people like me are passing you every single second because we say what we, we do what we said we're going to do. And we have a strong Northern star that wants to pull us out of our current situation. So you can either get lapped. You know, there's another quote that says, uh, uh, opportunity doesn't go away. It just goes to the next person. Are you going to step into your dreams? Now this is starting to turn, turn into a motivational video. But seriously, are you going to step into your dreams? Or are you just going to watch this and, and close the laptop, close your phone, turn it off, swipe? And just be average like most of the people in your life. We are taught to get a job. We're taught to get a job. That propaganda is shoved in our head all in school. Go to college, get a good job. Shoot, it was propaganda in my own family. You know, that was something I was supposed to do was go to college. It didn't fit what I wanted to do. And maybe it doesn't fit what you want to do. So make a change. It's simple. Make the decision. Count how much money is going out in bills or how much you're going to need to survive food, right? Bare essentials. Like, here's the deal. If you jump, 
be honest. If you jump, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to go homeless? Really? The government is going to throw you in some type of project or section eight or whatever you want to call it. I mean, is there really a rock bottom? Like really? Unless you've done it to yourself through drinking and drugs, whatever else, right? That's self-inflicted. Now I get it. Quitting and not having any income is self-inflicted too, but stay clean, stay clean. How far can you really go? Right? Like there was a, there was a survey that was asking children what they really want from their parents. You know, where do they want to go? What kind of stuff do they want? Like, what do they really want? What was it? Time. You could be on welfare. And as long as you're reading a book with them and talking with them and holding them and listening to them, they will be fine. I didn't grow up with a lot of money. Like very little. It was my mom, single mom, raising two kids. And she used to tell us all the time. She was like, hey, listen, <laughs> I think the question came up. I don't even know if we asked it, but she asked or someone else asked her, like, why aren't you on welfare? Because she was a teacher. If you know how much teachers get paid, raising two boys by herself. And the reason she didn't take the welfare is because at least what she told us was somebody else out there needs it more than we do. But we didn't have much at all, like very, very little. But you couldn't have told me we had very, very little. I had my friends down the street. I was sweeping driveways and making money, you know? So how far, how far, and that's for you parents. If you're not a parent, go take risk. By the way, none of this is financial advice. If you could read the description below and understand that I am not held liable to anything that you desire to do. Go take some risk, go take some risk. Go take some risk, take some risk, take some risk. It'll be worth it. And I'll just go over those steps one more, one more again because this really turned into a motivational video. Probably something you want to hear. Matter of fact, rewind the video, listen to it over and over. There were so many videos and and uh, eBooks that I would listen to all the time to hype me up and move to the next level. Hype me up, hype me up, because sometimes I needed it because there was nobody else around, right? But people make that excuse, hey, I ain't got nobody to show me. I ain't got to. Have you pulled up YouTube and turned on some videos? You got the hip hop preacher, right? Eric, Eric, um, pushing people all the time. I listen, I listen to him all the time telling me to quit complaining. David Goggins, turn his book on. Turn his videos on. You got people who could push you. Me, rewind, listen to this thing again. Make the commitment of what you want to do. Find out how much money you need. Stack the cash. Quit. It's really that simple. Will it be hard? Yeah. Will others disown you? Yep. Will it be one of the loneliest things you've ever done? Probably. Is it worth it? I am so blessed of the people that are in my life and some of the cool things we get to do. But none of that came without taking massive risk. Just let me know. Put it in the description below. DM me. Hit me up on Instagram. Let me know what your thoughts are, what you're thinking, and what you do. Let me know if you need help. Hope you have an amazing day. Not a long video. Straight to the facts, baby. Adios.